right. It's time to do something and settle this up once and for all, don't you think? Well, answer me. That's the least you can do. That's a matter of days. Yeah, right. What happened? Well, a woman named Claire Kano took a small caliber shell in the right temple, fired at close range. Oh, so then probably the killer was sitting in the car next to her. Oh, probably. She also was robbed. Her wallet was found in the brush over here. She wasn't wearing any jewelry. You think it was a hitchhiker? Could be. Why didn't he take the car, too? It's easier not to. The car's easy to trace. Who are you interrogating? Kate, questioning. It's the woman's husband, Peter Kano. We brought him out here to ID the body. Gee, I don't know, Mike. Sherlock Holmes at least had some warmth. Yeah, well, I bet he didn't have 200 homicides here either. I'll bet he didn't. You find anything else besides the body? There was some pipe tobacco in the car, but her husband doesn't smoke a pipe. So then there was a man in the car with her. Elementary. Or the killer wanted to make it look like there was a man in the car. Right. Anything? Anything else? Well, we found this paper in her wallet. I have to talk to you alone. Mike, if that note was written by the killer, I don't think it was the hitchhiker. What do you think? Well, I'm no Sherlock Holmes, but I try. Can you imagine black shoes with a brown dress? <laughs> oh, I gotta go. Call you later. Excuse me, uh, I'd like to see Mr. Kano, please. Oh, he isn't in. I'm his secretary. Can I help you? I don't know. Uh, my name's Kate Callahan. I'm a reporter with the Valley Advocate. A reporter? Yeah, I wanted to talk to Mr. Kano about, well, you know, about his wife. Oh, wasn't that just awful? Poor Mr. Kano. Now, he hasn't been in much since, well, since it happened. But to tell you the truth, I could smell trouble brewing. Oh, really? What kind of trouble? Look, I'm only a secretary. Well, not that I eavesdrop or anything, but... Well, there's some things a person just can't help being aware of. Oh, yeah? Like what? Well, that group his wife went to. Sensual awareness. <laughs> now, there's something I could never understand. A bunch of people blabbing their strange personal problems to... But other people with strange personal problems. Yeah, do you think that Mr. Kano felt the same way about... Well, how could he feel any different? It was supposed to make their marriage better. I don't see how a group like that could make anything better. They were all off the wall, especially the doctor. Now, Mr. Kano isn't the type to go around saying this, but I feel sure he feels that somehow Dr. Bradley was responsible for his wife's death. This lady's a reporter. She wants to ask you some questions about Mrs. Kano. I'm sure the police will answer any questions you may have. Well, I uh, already told her about Dr. Bradley and the group. Well, I suppose it'll all come out anyway. I'm sure the police will find that the killer is a member of that group. Mr. Kano, is there anything specific that leads you to... Look, this is the first time I've been able to make myself come back here. So please, don't make it any more difficult for me to be here today than it has to be. The city council's reply to my flood control editorial, you know, we could print that with a rebuttal of their rebuttal, and then just go on rebutting each other forever. Mm-hmm. Oh. Research or self-education? I have decided to join Dr. Philip Bradley's sensual awareness group, and I'm trying to learn about my inner self. I know more about my inner self than I care to. Josh, the police came up with nothing on Claire Kano's murder. Can you believe it? 
And you think you're going to find a lead in Bradley's group? Well, at least I'll find a story. I mean, this sort of emotional group therapy is proliferating all over the valley. It's time the advocate took a look at it. Well, if you do join that group, shouldn't you go there with some kind of problem? Yeah, I guess so. But there are so many to choose from. Have you got any suggestions? Oh, don't ask me. When it comes to psychological problems, I deal with them in one of two ways. I get testy, or I walk away from them. In that case, sayonara. But thank you very much, Dr. Freud. You have helped me enormously. Oh, are you all through? <laughs> Is that everything? Yes, I think so. Oh, you're a real estate analyst. That's very impressive. Thank you. These are very impressive. I understand Dr. Bradley was first in his class when he graduated from Harvard. No kidding. Oh, hello, Elaine. Hi, Darlene. Am I late? No, they haven't even started yet. Why don't you two ladies go in together? Oh, great. Hi. Hi. I think it's about time we get going. Oh, great. Hi, Elaine. Come Hi. on in. Sorry. Okay, everyone, let's say hello to our new member, Kate Fitzsimmons. Hello, Kate. Hi. All right. Hi, Kate. Welcome to the Passion Pit. Thank you. <laughs> this is a good spot right here for you. Okay, now, we spent a lot of time in the, uh, Arthur. Arthur? Oh, yeah, hi. <laughs> Thank you. We spent a lot of time in the last couple of sessions dealing with our feelings about Claire Kano. And it is unfortunate, to say the least, that uh, there is someone out there with enough pent-up hostility to commit such an act, an act that so violently took one of our people. But now, it is time to get back into ourselves, okay? Yeah. Okay. Well, Kate, we're not very structured here. We sort of hang loose. Our aim is freedom through total honesty. This is the place to let it all hang out. And once you let it all out, you'll be free. It's the American way. Thank you, Arthur. Now, we're all going to get to know each other very well here, because the better we know each other, the easier it's going to be to talk about anything. Sometimes it gets very personal. <laughs> Feelings are supposed to be personal. To each his own. Yeah, OK, everyone, let's introduce ourselves to Kate. We'll start with uh, Elaine. Uh, well, I'm married, and uh, lately things haven't been going too well between my husband and myself. But. Uh, I think that the romance has gone out of our relationship. Oh, come on, Elaine. Your husband is dull. Boring. Yes, well, um, Arthur has an endearing way with words. You want to keep a lid on it, Arthur, Tell it's your turn? Hey, whatever. Right? Lila. I'm Lila, and um, I come from a very religious home where I was kept sheltered from reality. Sometimes that's a blessing. You can't bury your head in the sand. It's my head. If I want to bury it, I will. See, the point is, there's probably no one who doesn't have some sort of a hang-up. Uh, ignorance, fears, social taboos, whatever. The important thing is to recognize the problem. Okay? Uh, Bill. Well, my problem is that my wife has a problem. And she constantly compares me to a father that she thinks is some sort of a guy. There's no law against loving your father. And the way you put him on a pedestal oh. is downright childish. And you're all grown up? We wouldn't be here if he was grown Look, up. Look, I am not hanging on to my father. All right, all right, let's, let's just hold it right there. This is good. This is all good, straight, honest talk, and that's what this trip is all about. All right, Arthur, take it away. Oh, uh, thank you, thank you. I'm, uh... I'm single and available, Kate. My uh, only problem seems to be projection, the wrong kind of projection. I can't seem to project to the women I meet the real kind of man I am underneath. But if you give me half a chance. <laughs> Arthur's problem is obviously not modesty. His problem is being a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> and Bill's problem, of course, is being married to one. You'll never have that problem. Nobody will marry you. <laughs> Cute. Good. Good. Now the heavy stuff is coming out. You see, you lose a little control, and you lose a little of the defense mechanism. This is exactly what I'm after. These I feel good vibes now. This is great. All right. Kate. Oh, God, I didn't expect this. Yeah, you're I... up. Go ahead. 
Okay. Uh, gee. Well, I'm divorced. Oh, good, good. <laughs> uh, it was a friendly divorce. It was more a clash of, of careers than personalities. And um, I guess I'm having some difficulty just adjusting to my new life. That's it? You mean we're all spilling our guts out and you're having a problem adjusting? Adjusting to what? To the weather? Well, hardly the weather. I'll bet you something important like men, huh? I'll bet you don't even have a boyfriend. No, I, no, I don't. What other relationships do you have? There's my daughter. Bet she's a lot of fun on a date. Why can't you find a man? Well, I... I not uh, good enough for you, huh? Oh, no, that's not true. That's not true. Well, then what is it? You feel you're not good enough for them? No, I... You sound awfully sure to yourself, you know that? Maybe that's your problem, feeling too sure of yourself. Well, which, which yeah, one which, is which it? Yeah, which is it? Yeah, come on. Yeah, tell us. All right, all right, okay, okay. Let's uh, all back off to neutral corners. I think we've exposed Kate to enough for her first time here. When you've uh, recovered from this initiation barrage, you might want to talk. You can call me any time at home. Me too, me too. Not now, Arthur. Sometimes it's easier to talk over the phone. Here's my number. <laughs> what about this thing, huh? How about that, huh? Is that interesting? The same kind of paper they found with clear cane on. Let's see what Mike has to say about this. I think we did very well. For sure, they weren't questioning you. They could have leaned on you a lot harder than what they did. Why would they? They did find your brand of pipe tobacco in the car. What makes it my brand? You can buy it in any tobacco store. Oh, great. Now they're bringing in my patients for questioning. Kate Callahan's in your group? You mean Kate Fitzsimmons. <laughs> Maybe she's changed her name in the last 30 days, but that lady wrote a story on the bank fraud case that I handled last month. A story? You mean she's a reporter? Don't you even know the people in your own group? I thought you were on a little more intimate terms with your patients. Not all of them. Kate? Well, surprise, surprise. I didn't expect to find you here. Shock therapy. <laughs> Hope you don't mind. Well, as a matter of fact, it has been such a crazy day. No, you seem to be under some stress during the session. I was concerned. Uh, besides, house calls, part of my package deal. You know, if I'm going to be your therapist, you really shouldn't be hiding anything from me. You know, Doctor, I really don't have much time right now. My daughter should be home any minute, and I have to start dinner. Real estate business really keeps you hopping, huh? Oh, unbelievable. <laughs> you know, real estate shows creativity. But then reporters should be creative. Okay. Okay. You, uh, forgot to change the name on your mailbox. Well, I didn't think you'd come to my house. Your money, my dear, cheerfully refunded. Oh, thank you very much. I didn't expect it. What do you think you're doing? If you're trying to pull some sleazy expose, I'm going to sue your newspaper right out of existence. I'm not doing an expose. I'm just trying to find out about Claire Kano. Well, you're not going to find out anything from me, and you're certainly not coming back into the group. Frankly, Daphne, that's a relief. I guess that one takes me off the hook, doesn't it? Hi! Hi, sweetheart. Your daughter? Yeah. If you choose to return on an honest level, my services are available. Is he selling something? Uh-huh. But I'm not sure I'm buying it. Oh, whatever Dr. Bradley's doing, I hope it works. Oh, it does for most of us. What about that woman who was killed? Claire? Well, it wasn't working for her. But then she was a cold fish. Kind of a... <laughs> like a... Like a Joan Crawford without the shoulder pads. <laughs> And you think that was her problem, huh? Being cold? Well, she wasn't very open in the group. And anyone who got close, well, they didn't stay close too long. Oh, thanks. Who got close? It's for me. Oh, bacon bits. They put bacon bits on my salad. I can't... I'm a vegetarian. 
Oh, well, uh, well, here, uh, I'll take your salad, and you can have my sandwich. How's that? It's lettuce, tomato, and avocado. Okay. Who got clothes? Well, Arthur Sandoval tried to get clothes to Claire. To everyone, it seemed. Claire was no exception. Boy, did she bust his balloon. She told him she'd go out with Jack the Ripper before she'd have anything to do with him. If looks could kill. Well, I guess Sandoval was asking for it, huh? White bread? God, I'm sorry. You should at least order whole wheat. Well, I will. I will. I'll do that from now on. Listen, um, did anybody else try to get close to Claire? Well, Philip, uh, Dr. Bradley sometimes gets very involved with some of his patients. With Claire? Well, could be. She stayed behind alone with him the day she was killed. You don't think that he had anything? I don't know. I don't know. Oh. I haven't had white bread in so long. Oh, it's absolutely yummy. Listen, do any of you guys ever get together, you know, in the group as friends? Well, Claire and Elaine were friends for a while, but that went down the tubes eventually. Oh, why? Don't ask me. Why are you asking me? Because Sue Quinlan told me that you and Claire were friends. <sighs> Wait a minute. What are you doing, running around, talking to everybody in the group about Claire? I'm just trying to find out why she was killed. Well, what does that have to do with the group? I mean, are you with the police? No. I'm a reporter. And I understand that you might have seen Claire after the session the day she was killed. I didn't. Do you have any idea at all why anyone would want to kill her? No. No. But Listen, I'm sorry, but I've got to get busy in the kitchen. I've got guests coming in tonight. Is there anything you can tell me about Claire in the group? If you're doing a story about the murder, you're looking in the wrong place. Claire was losing faith with the whole group experience. In fact, she even thought Dr. Bradley was a fraud, a quack. Well, why would she say something like that? I don't want to talk about this now. All right. OK. But can I call you later? I'd rather you didn't. Goodbye. Goodbye. Number. I was too busy trying to save my life. Well, can you tell me at least what kind of car it was? Yellow. Yellow. <laughs> Come on, Mike. This killer banana is trying to push me into a nosedive off Mulholland Drive. And you expect me to read the name on the ornament hood? 
Well, was it little, big, domestic, foreign? It was vicious. Well, I know one thing. What's that? You're on to something. Maybe, but it just doesn't make any sense. I mean, that car could have rammed me off the road, but it didn't. Shook you up pretty good, huh? Yeah, but an incident like that isn't enough to scare a reporter off a story. It'd just get the reporter more involved. Okay, do you think maybe that's what they wanted to do? What else have you got? Well, if I can believe Elaine, Claire thought Bradley was a fraud. I'll see if I can check on that. Yeah, well, I'll put out an APB on a... Yellow. Yellow. <laughs> Yellow. Harvard University. Uh, hello. I'd like to find out about one of your PhD students, please. What department? Psychology. I'll connect you. Psychology department? Yes, I'd like some information on one of your Ph.D. graduates. Uh, who's calling, please? Oh, this is Kate Callahan. I'm a reporter with the Valley Advocate in California. And the name of the graduate? Philip Bradley. Oh, he never attended this school. Well, how would you know that so quickly? Someone called about him last week. Really? And uh, do you remember who that person was, by any chance? Well, it might be in my logbook. Just a minute. Uh, here we are. Claire Kano. And that was on the 14th. Claire Kano. Thank you very much. He didn't go to Harvard. Mm-hmm. Well, that's what Claire Kano had out of him then, huh? Yeah. Plus the pipe tobacco and the note paper. The whole thing seems to be closing in on Bradley. Except it's all circumstantial. It's all circumstantial. I wonder if there's anyone else in that group who knew about Bradley. Is there anyone else you can ask? Oh, I can hardly ask Bradley. And Elaine certainly isn't too anxious to talk to me. And Sue, I just don't think she knows anything. Anyone else? Yeah, there he is. Well, how you like it? Well, it's, uh, it's, it's very interesting. You know, see, I believe that uh, a place a man lives should reflect his own psyche, you know? Uh, well, I, I don't know you that well, Arthur, but uh, I'd have to say that you've accomplished that. Oh, thank you. You really have. You, uh, you care for a little wine before? Before what? Dinner, of course. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there we are. I think you'll like this. You, uh, you like Chinese food, don't you? Oh, oh sure, sure. Ah, uh, good. It should, it should be here soon. It's being catered. Oh, not exactly catered. Uh, say more like delivered, you know? Oh. <laughs> here, sit right here. That's it. Make yourself comfy. Oh. That's... You know, I'm, uh, I'm real glad you called. Well, Arthur, you know, I thought that lunch would have been more appropriate for getting yeah. to know each other. You're kind of like an old-fashioned girl, aren't you? You know, I think I like that. Uh, I wanted to ask you something about the group, Arthur. Hey, we're not in the group now, you know? It's just us, one-on-one, -on -one, me and you. Oh, Arthur, there's the, the bell. Is that your doorbell? Food! Food is here! <laughs> okay. Say my place, huh? Oh, I will. All right. Oh. Hi. Right on time. Here you go, buddy. Let's some for you. Voila! Hey, where are you going? Well, dinner, I... Ah, 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 that can wait. Now, where were we? Oh, Arthur, I really hate cold chow mein. I hate oh, it. Oh, okay, I'll tell you what you do. Just sit down, have one more little drink of wine. You <laughs> are so tense. You know, you're all knotted up back I know, there. I know. Well, it's part yeah. of my problem. It's one of the reasons I joined the group. But, you know, I just... I'm not so sure about that Dr. Bradley. He's so... He's so different. I mean, how do you feel about it? Don't you really want to know about how I feel about you? Oh, Arthur. Aren't you moving a little too fast? Hey, you called me, and you know the kind of guy I am. I never had any doubts. <laughs> Is that a crack? Oh, no! Oh, no, no, not at all. I, uh, frankly, I have just never had to deal with anyone as, um, as aggressive as you are. Hey, aggressive is one of my strong points. I can see that. <laughs> uh, I'm not so sure I like your attitude about this whole thing. 
Well, maybe we should just forget it. No, no, maybe we should just sit back and relax and have some more wine. Arthur, um, another glass of wine really won't help. I think I better, I better go. What am I, are you putting me on? No, oh, no, no, it's my fault, it's my mistake. Um, I'm just not ready for you. Boy, you have got some nerve, lady. I mean, I went out of my way for you. I canceled a date. I, I, I sent out for food special all the way to Westwood. And now you're just gonna sip my wine and split? Thanks a lot, great. Well, maybe some other time. No, no other time, forget it. You just wanna string me along like one of those groupers. Oh, well, Claire didn't string you along, did she? Look, all she had to do was tell me up front there was no chance, that's all. Well, Arthur, I mean, isn't it possible, I mean, just possible, that you came on a little too strong? Look, why didn't they tell me that they were, you know, a little more than friendly? Why didn't they make up an excuse? Instead, they let me think they were interested like you did. Oh, come on. You don't mean to say that Claire and Elaine... Oh, come off it, will you? You're just like them. Go on, get out of here. Go on. And I'll tell you something else. I'm a liberal guy, but don't come to me to help you with your problems or straighten you out, okay? Now, get out. Sure, Arthur, sure. But by the way, I really loathe Chinese food. No, it's okay. Listen, weekends, weekdays, it's all the same to me, except on the weekends, I get to work at home. Uh. Kano? No way. I'm not going to pay more than $28.50 a dozen. You got that? That's the bottom line. You still working on that story about Claire? Yes, I am. I hope you expose that phony for what he really is. Oh, please don't answer that. I really have to talk to you. It's important. Kano. I'm going to have to call you back. Watch. How come the cops haven't come up with anything? Look, I understand. I, I have suspicions of my own, but I think they agree. Except they keep saying they don't have enough evidence. Well, that's why I'm here to see if I can find something that they missed. Do you mind if I ask you just some questions about Dr. Bradley's group? No, not at all. Great. Did Claire ever mention that she was particularly close to any of the other members? Me and the group? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, there was one woman, uh, uh, what was her name? Uh, Elaine, something. What difference does it make? Well, I'm not sure, except that, uh, did you know that Claire had been checking up on Dr. Bradley? Well, it's some consolation that she finally was coming to her senses. Listen, um, this may sound like a terrible imposition, and please tell me if it is, but do you think it would be possible for me to look through Claire's things? Yeah, I guess it's all right. Come on. Claire's sitting room is at the head of the stairs. Uh, most of her stuff is still in there. Look, if you'll excuse me, I have quite a few invoices to go over, okay? Oh, you go right ahead. You can put the phone back now. There's something the group knows about your relationship with Claire that you didn't tell me. Oh, 
can't imagine what you're talking about. Here. Thanks. Isn't that your lighter? Well, I don't know. I thought it was. It looked like... You and Claire were very close, weren't you? We knew each other. Elaine, I'd like to hear the truth from you. What kind of a story are you doing? I'm trying to help solve a murder. I am not remotely interested in exposing anybody's private life. This is very difficult for me to talk about. I'm very sorry about Claire and for what you're going through. But the police are conducting an investigation. They're going to dig deeper and deeper into Claire's life and eventually Eventually, they're going to find out everything. At first, it was just a friendship. I was very lonely. And it just grew. It just grew into more. And the truth is that for me, the physical aspect was the least important part of our friendship. I just wanted to please Claire. And I really do love my husband and my family. So your husband doesn't know? No, of course not. I'm sorry, Lane, but I certainly don't want to tell you how to live your life, but you know what you have to do before this gets to your family from somebody else. And chances are it's not going to come out the way you want it to. Did Bradley know? Yes, he was very helpful. That's my husband. Okay, I'm going, I'm going. Hi. I'm, I'm just a friend of Elaine's. We go to group together. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. <laughs> no, no, no. That won't be necessary. No, the session ends at 8. We can meet right here. Right here. Listen, I'm going to have to call you back. Right, bye-bye. I uh, thought I made it clear that you're not welcome in this office. Doctor, and I use that term loosely, I still have a few questions I'd like to ask you. You don't seem to have the capacity to understand. I know Claire Kano found out. Well, Claire Kano? What is this obsession you have about trying to involve me in Claire Kano's death? It is Kano's not an obsession, death? it's a reality. Look, I've seen this before. You are simply trying to fill an emotional void. I suggest you find a good psychologist. I called Harvard. You never went to that school, let alone graduated from it. Okay. Big deal. So the diploma is a fake. But I am not. I did get my PhD in psychology. But from Clifton University. Not as impressive as an Ivy League school. So I improved my image. I enhanced it. Made my patients feel a little more secure. I didn't hurt anybody. Except maybe Claire Kano. She stayed behind alone with you the day she was killed. Now hold it. Maybe I didn't go to some highfalutin school, but I do what I'm supposed to do. I helped Claire Kano just like I helped those other people. You helped Claire with what? I'm sorry, that was her problem. And Elaine's? Elaine told me. Well, then, she told you how much I helped her when Claire decided to come out of the closet to go public. Um, no, Elaine just said that, uh, that uh, the relationship had ended. Well, maybe as far as Elaine was concerned. But Claire didn't give up that easily, and Elaine was desperate. Now, I kept Claire under control. I kept Elaine in one piece. I kept her marriage from falling apart. She didn't mention that. Well, that's okay with me. 
I'm not looking for glory or publicity. Which means I have absolutely no reason to talk to reporters. This is Joshua Alden with Valley Advocate. I'd like to know if you've done any body work on a yellow Mercedes yesterday or today. Hi. Yeah, this is Kate Callahan. I'm a reporter with the Valley Advocate. Yeah. Can you tell me if you've done any body work on a yellow Mercedes in the past 24 hours? Well, thanks anyway. Right. Thank you. Hello, this is Josh Alden with the Valley Advocate. I'd like to know if you've done any body work on a yellow Mercedes in the past 24 hours. Uh, hold on, please. I got it. Classic body repair. Uh. Well, you don't have to ruin my phone book. Tell me who the owner is, please. Okay. Excuse me, sir. Oh, I'm sorry, but we're a little backed up right now. No, no, I called about the Mercedes. The yellow one? Oh, the Mercedes threw the whole shop off the schedule. Makes all the other customers a little testy. A real rush job, huh? Rush? We replaced the fender and a bumper in one day. We should be in the Guinness Book of Records for what we did. Can I uh, take a look at that fender? Sure. This is the son of a gun. Can you tell me the name of the man who brought it in? You mean the lady. The lady? What lady? Regency Auto Rental. Right. But the lady, she sure doesn't work for him. I know them all. And the lady, she paid cash. Thank you very much. I'm sorry to bother you. Right. It's all right. I'm not sure we should divulge that information. Well, you know, um, my paper was thinking of doing a story on all of the elegant automobiles available today. And, of course, we had hoped to feature Regency auto rental. Do I detect a hint of coercion? Perhaps a hint of persuasion. Just wanted to be sure. Here. Sally Kimberly. Is that her home address? It was on her license. No, I said, does your poker buddy, Tom, what's his name? You know, we've talked about him before. Does he still work for the phone company? Yeah, Tom, what's his name? Still happens to be vice president of the phone company. Oh, good. Because there was a phone call made from somewhere in the valley to Harvard University on the 14th. Josh. I really must know exactly where that phone call came from. Kate, you need all kinds of court orders to get that kind of information. Oh? Even if you're a vice president? Oh, Kate. OK. Will you call me as soon as you find out? Oh, well, thank you. Spaghetti? Two nights in a row? Wow, that's neato. How come? Did I do something to deserve this? You are my daughter, and I love you, and I want you to be happy. But you hate spaghetti. Well, honey, I'm not having dinner here. 
Mrs. Robinson will be here soon. Would you get Mike on the phone for me, please? Sergeant Verrick, please. You going out to dinner with Mike? Oh, no, honey. Not dinner. Mike, this is Jenny. Hold on. Mike, I think I know who did it. I was surprised when you called. You don't seem the type for blackmail. Do you mind if I sit down? No, not at all. Well, I tracked down the car that tried to run me off the road. You know, the car that looked like Bradley's car. It was rented by your secretary. We should have been more... Uh... Creative? Oh, indeed, indeed. And then there was the phone call, a woman called. Must have been your secretary, using Claire's name. Obviously, you wanted it to look like Claire found out about the fake diploma to strengthen Bradley's motive. Unfortunately, the call was made from this office. That's very good. <laughs> you're terrific. You're almost worth the money you're asking. Well, if I didn't do enough, I'm sure I can trace the purchase of a certain kind of pipe tobacco and note paper, the kind used by Dr. Bradley. That won't be necessary? I didn't think so. Tell me, uh, what was your secretary getting out of this? She's gonna be my wife. Well, in that case, I do have one final question. Why? Community property. You see, we have a very large inventory here, therefore very little cash. Claire wanted to take her part out of the partnership. And in order for me to pay her off, I would have had to use all the cash, which would have left me with nothing to keep the business going. And that's why you killed her? To keep her share of the business? Look, two people work very hard together to build something most of their life. And then when they have it, and it's right there in front of them, one of them goes crazy. I mean, she went crazy. Started having high-class notions about finding herself, enriching her life. She wanted to take her share and change her lifestyle, a new lifestyle. And I said, no. Nobody. Nobody's going to take this away from me. You understand that? Well, I'm certainly not going to take it away from you. Just give me my money. I can't do that. Okay. If that's the way you want it, that's the way you got it. No, this is the way it's going to have to be. I'm sorry. Move. Move! Drop the gun. Down. a boy. Great. We got it all on tape. Okay, okay. Almost. Oh. You didn't tell me how cold these things can get. <laughs> Mimi.
Tonight, Hitler's top men avenge the life-saving deeds of a Swedish diplomat on Wallenberg, a hero story. And later today, a tennis pro courts backhanded justice on City of Angels.